Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Business. We'll get you the latest on all the top business stories of the day. Well, starting with the markets. Well, benchmark indices held on to steady gains through Tuesday to rise in the last leg of trade. Well, non-banking financial companies and reality sectors advanced, while fast-moving consumer goods were under pressure. Hiral Dadia with the wrap of all the market action. The HDFC Twins merger announcement date comes in as a big booster for the markets as well. Clearly, it boosted the Sensex by almost little, nearly 450 points, and it helped the Nifty end above the 18,800 levels as well. Interestingly, if you see the WIX, that was down almost 6% in trade today. Uh, overall, if you see in terms of uh, the market sentiment as well, that actually improved in the last hour of trade because, yes, tomorrow was expected to be a holiday in the markets, but the BS and NSE came out with the announcement that the Eid holiday will be moved from Wednesday to Thursday. So that was one of the reasons why we saw some bit of an action coming in there as well. And now the expiry is tomorrow. Uh, overall, if you see in terms of bank nifty as well, that clearly outperformed the benchmark indices in trade and the advanced decline ratio was pretty much in favor of the bulls. Uh, if you see in terms of stock specific action, HDFC Life, Apollo Hospital, SBI, JSW Steel as well as SBI Life. These were for you of the top gainers in trade today, whereas on the losing end on nifty, you had Sipla, Britannia, Tata Consumers, Adani Ports as well as a UPL. Let's quickly look at the newsmakers and trade today. Z Entertainment, you have sat, which has gone ahead and reserved the order in terms of Z's Goenka and Chandra's appeal against the SEBI order on the back of which there was some movement there. IFL Securities dropped a trade as well and this is because SAT state said the order which was barring onboarding of new clients and that came in as a breather. Interglobe Aviation saw a move and that's because UBS went ahead and increased the target price. Paytm was downgraded by Macquarie. Uh, Godrej Industries saw a block deal in trade and there was momentum there. Diagnostic companies like Apollo Hospital, you know, the entire chain, Thyrocare, Lalpath, all of them, Krishna Diagnostics were in focus. Sapphire Foods saw some multiple deals in today's session. Access Kids jumped in trade today as well as a PNC Infra did see some good moves. So overall, if you go to see a lot of stock specific action, but great momentum that the markets caught up in the last hour of trade and that helped Nifty and above those 18,800 levels and Bank Nifty above those 44,100 levels. Back to you. Well, thanks, uh, Hudal, for that wrap. But are you wondering which sectors to bet on in this market? Gautam Trivedi lists, lists out the sectors he will vouch for. Listen in. I continue to like the banks. Uh, we like cement. I think bulk of uh, the government of India's record capex, 13 lakh crores, $160 billion, which is roughly about 4% of India's GDP, that will start to kick in, given, and more so given the fact that we've got, uh, we're in a pre-election year, and the big general election is is probably the same time next year. So given that, uh, we continue to like banks, cement. Uh, I think uh, if you look at the kind of work that's going on in uh, uh, infrastructure capex, uh, government capex uh, as a percentage of government spend has gone up from 10% in FY09, this is an interesting statistic, statistic that I have, to 22% today. So, you know, while private sector capex is still lagging, uh, you are seeing pockets of private sector capex picking up, cement being a case in point, infrastructure being uh, another case in point. But while that's still lagging, uh, the government clearly in a pre-election year is uh, unfortunately or fortunately uh, bearing the burden of uh, doing incremental capex. And the number, as I said, you know, it's as much as 4% of GDP that the government will spend over the next uh, 10 months. So I think the positive news is that uh, you will see a lot of uh, demand coming in in cap goods uh, and cement. So, well, moving now after a long hiatus, the IPO market is buzzing again. Several IPOs are set to hit the Lal Street soon, and the Tatas are coming in with their first IPO in 19 years. Yes, well, market regulator SEBI has approved Tata Technologies IPO. The Tata Tech IPO will be a pure offer for sale by Tata Motors and others. Tata Tech's latest buyback valued the company at 16,080 crore rupees, and the Tata Technologies, a subsidiary of Tata Motors, is a pure play engineering services firm and moving now consumers got a respite from raging inflation in the past few months a delayed monsoon is here to burn a hole in your pockets prices of vegetables and fruits are on the rise 
with tomatoes seeing a 70% jump in prices from the previous month. That is now the big concern. Pallavi joins in with more details. Over to you, Pallavi. Now, you've all heard about tomato prices retailing at 100 rupees per kg at some places. A kg of tomatoes in Swiggy Instamart is currently selling at 89 rupees in Mumbai and 84 rupees on Big Basket in Mumbai again. Tomato prices have spiked in the last few days, but that's also accompanied with a rise in prices of several other key vegetables, some fruits, some cereals and dals. Now, according to official data from the Department of Consumer Affairs, tomato prices were at 41 rupees per kg. That's 71% higher than what it was a month ago. Now, what's to be kept in mind is that these are actually all India averages. So, tomatoes in Calcutta are actually the most expensive among all metros. Potatoes cost 22 rupees per kg and onions cost 24 rupees a kg according to official data. Now, the rise in prices is predominantly because of late rains and some amount of speculative pricing, according to some economists. In general, the months from May to August do see a little bit of a seasonal uptick in prices because of summers followed by the onset of the monsoons. Tomato prices have seen a slight slump in previous, previous months and could have seen a jump because of unseasonal rains and heat spells. Among vegetables, potatoes, onions and tomatoes actually enjoy the highest weightage in the consumer basket. Together, they comprise 2.2% of the consumer price index. As such, the data for these vegetables is published on a daily basis by the department. A look at wholesale prices for the whole month so far, also provided by the government, shows a rise in prices of some other key vegetables as well, such as brinjols and cauliflower. Along with fruits and vegetables, daily prices of cereals and pulses picked up momentum, according to Gora Sen Gupta, India economist at IDFC First Bank. For many of the items, the increase in June is more than the usual seasonal momentum, indicating the impact of a weak start to the monsoon. Now, some of the upward pressure on food prices is countered by a continuous decline in edible oil prices. Uh, Gora estimates CPI inflation for June to come in at 4.4%. And when you take stock of the situation of rising prices on the ground, BQ Prime's Akshat Mishra was at the Dada market where tomatoes are selling at high prices. Take a look at his report. As the monsoon hits Mumbai, there is a sharp hike in the prices of tomatoes. Now, these tomatoes will cost you around 80 to 100 rupees. To know all such details, today the team of BQ Prime is here at the Dadar market. What are you doing now? 80 rupees. 80 rupees. Yes. Is there any special reason why it's so expensive? This is the reason why it's coming. It's not coming in the rain. It's coming in the rain. बढ़ गया। ये टमाटर का क्या भाव चल रहा है? साठ रुपए या सिर्फ एक किलो। साठ रुपए या सिर्फ एक किलो। किलो। तो इसके पहले क्या भाव था? कुछ एक हफ्ते पहले। एक हफ्ते पहले चालीस तीस था इसका। तीस चालीस रुपए था। तो भी टमाटर के जो भाव बढ़े उसके कोई कारण मतलब किस वजह से? खेती में माल नहीं एक किलो लिया है और कोई क्या दिक्कतों का सामना करना पड़ रहा है आपको महंगाई महंगाई अब देखो हम आठ दस हजार रुपया महीने में कमाने वाला आदमी है आप कैसा जिएगा बम्बई में इट मेक्स अ बिग डिफरेंस बिकॉज वेर यू कैन स्पेंड हाफ द अमाउंट ऑन टमाटोज एंड आई कैन परचेज समथिंग एल्स I'm paying the other purchase price on tomatoes, so it gets expensive. So, आप अभी quantity उतनी ले रहे हैं या कुछ कम भी करना है इसे भी? No, like right now since it's cheaper here, so I'm taking double the quantity because maybe in my area it's double the price. अभी तो मांगा ज़्यादा है तो खपत कम करना ही पड़ेगा ना? ओ उसके हिसाब से जो ज़्यादा मांगा है थोड़ा कम खाना पड़ेगा। जहाँ एक के जिले ना था तो हाँ आधा के जिले so big concern there. But moving to more news now, in a green energy push, NLC India plans to invest 75,000 crore rupees and this is a part of the expansion goal of becoming a 6,000 megawatt company by 2030. BQ Prime's Vikas Srivastav spoke to NLC's chairman and managing director Prasanna Kumar Motupalli about the company's capex plans. Listen in. We are having 1,421 megawatt of renewable energy. Mm. And we were the first to cross uh, one gigawatt installed capacity in the country. We are having uh, aggressive capacity addition plans in the renewables and we want to be 
a 6000 megawatt company by 2030. So, in that direction, the actions are already on and already last month we awarded a 300 megawatt solar thermal power plant near our Barsingsar project which is already construction is actively going on. We already tenderized uh, the 50 megawatt solar power plant in mine reclaimed plant. In the, this is the first of its kind in the country where in the mine reclaimed land we are installing a solar thermal power plant. So well that's a wrap on Let's Talk Business. A short break now, more news continues on the other side. Thank you.